so I'll do a quick recap. Uh, so far, everyone got dressed up, showed up at a ball, managed to get in without any trouble. Everyone is dressed too impressed. Uh, there's a courtyard where people are greeted, are taking some champagne and having some hors d'oeuvres. You wandered about for a little bit, but there wasn't much to see. You, Kagro and Drangar met the master of the lands, and that would be Vittorio Castellanter. Though he did say there was something up with the guest house, that it was closed due to need for renovations and other um, very cryptic excuses, and then wandered off. Inside, you met a room that was filled with music, lots of people, and an ongoing uh, blind auction. Uh, several artifacts are there, paintings, rugs, an odd puzzle box from Cholt, some uh, gauntlet and a helm, and things like that. To the next room, there is the dancing room where there's a person playing the piano. Um... And so things are kind of going. You did some investigating through the people, though it seems a lot of the guests don't know a lot about what could be hidden here. Um, they have no idea about a cult or anything like that, at least from what you've gathered. The black staff is also in attendance today, and you've managed to make a first impression. Whether it's good or bad is left to your interpretation. And Rainier showed up as well. Um, if you remember, he is the person that you first save where the Kanku were, uh, as he was the one that was to be kidnapped. He took Cerise and Darius to the upstairs area, gave you some information about the fact that the lackey uh, of his father, who had embezzled, uh, from what the rumor says, a million gold pieces from the Waterdeep government um, had it hidden somewhere and there was a stone of galore that was the key. So his most trusted lackey, um, a dark gnome, had the stone and was about to deliver it to you after he had discovered uh, that you had saved his son. Uh, though he is imprisoned and rumors of his death are false, um, now the lackey was killed and nobody knows where the Stone of Galore ended up. Uh, so with that information shared, he ended up departing and going back downstairs, leaving Cerise and Darius alone on the upper floor. Kagro continued to mingle, get some information. Uh, Drengar went to the back room uh, following his date, Rishka, to talk to the guards about the lack of security here. Um, while Marla and T took the hint of that guest room to be closed to investigate. They headed there. Nobody stopped them. They managed to make it inside unseen. Found a place that almost looks abandoned. Uh, only finding the sound of grating and something rubbing and dragging upstairs. Followed the sound and at the end of the third floor, or... The, the beginning of it, on the other side of the door, as they opened it, they were faced with a demon devil type creature covered in chains while um, tie being tied at the back of the room. And on the floor, crying, her back to the door, all dressed in a very bright and ornate yellow gown, is a lady crying, a book face down next to her. Now, as Marla was about to close the door uh, back, the lady turned uh, her head just slightly, not completely, just said, please, stay a while. And this is at this point, Marla, that she must do a wisdom saving throw. Use your reroll. Don't you have a reroll? Only for net ones. And no advantage. She got a five. Woo! Okay. We're gonna die. You guys got this. Don't worry. So, Marla, you feel 
a compulsion that you cannot resist to just open the door a little bit more and stay with this lady. Uh, take her suggestion for granted and just clearly she wants to talk and you just get that strong impression that it's the best course of action to take right now. Uh, you need to listen to what she has to say to you. And you can clearly see this creature at the back cannot reach you while he's tied as such. Not unless he breaks his chains. And uh, as you approach, she says, You're looking at Osvaldo. He is my son. Do I have particular feelings due to the suggestion or you would feel to that announcement as you would you just don't feel an inkling to leave that's the only thing you wouldn't get how far into the room is she not even a full foot she may even have a foot left on the out still like on the stairs she would just be a few inches closer if there's any cover for me I am going to grab her by the back of her neck or whatever I can grab and just get out of there. You would be able to grab her just leaning forward, but you would reveal yourself doing so. I don't trust this. <gasps> we have to get out of here. Like, I... My hood is up. She she wouldn't see my face or any part of me. You left your cloak and put it aside. No, I I just put my hood up. I told him not to do okay. that. Oh, I must have misremembered that. Okay. I'm going to yank her out of there. All right. Oh, because... but we should stay. <laughs> no, because... we really should not. Because Marla wishes to stay um, compulsively, you're trying to yank her. Uh, Marla, you're small, so you'll have uh, a normal roll. So do a normal strength roll. So it's going to be contest. T, you roll strength with advantage. Boom. So you ragdoll Marla, basically, and uh, start taking off. Let's see how well that will go. Um, you hear from atop the stairs, No! And, um, how am I going to do this to see how fast you go? Roll a either acrobatics or athletics. Actually, no, running is athletics. Roll an athletics check. Motherfucker. But, but she said to stay. Can I use feline agility to do anything here? Hold on. Uh, what does that do usually? It doubles my movement speed. I'll allow it to give you a plus two. I don't think a nine will help me. No, not against a 17. So she gets up really quickly. And you also have to do, I think it's a wisdom saving throw. Motherfucker, why? Why now? Why now? Yeah, as you do this, you feel almost as if the muscles inside your legs are turning to cement. And you're no longer able to move. Uh, you can't really understand them, but you're able to move the basically the muscles in your face. It's almost as if there's invisible hands uh, grabbing at you on all sides and just holding you there. Who you, are you? I am the lady of the house. Amalia Castellanta. And you are far too quick to judge. You do not know what is going on here. 
and I simply cannot let you alert the city guard to this. I cannot let you doom my child, my poor boy. He was a price to pay. Nothing more. There's not, nothing as bad as you even think it is. I know it looks bad, but it isn't. It looks horrid. What happened to him? We were approached by the great lord himself, Asmodeus. You don't refuse a favor to Asmodeus if you've ever heard of him. He can be frightening. So, we did the bargain for our firstborn. He is to join his army. Osvaldo is nine years old, and he is now chained to my guest room wall in the attic. It breaks my heart. We've been looking. We've heard of money. Asmodeus has confirmed to us, his best guards, that with that sum would free our child. Would you really doom him? I hope you can understand that I cannot trust your word. And I will do my best to understand that powers like that cannot be denied. Truly. From my perspective, you must understand I cannot comprehend what has happened here. So, I have many questions if you would be willing. And I promise I will keep my lips sealed. Uh, either do a persuasion or deception, depending on whether you're lying or telling the truth. All right. I will test you. I will go back with you to the party, but you will stay until it ends. If I see you seem trustworthy, then perhaps. But before I do, and she leans, and as you have, like, uh, Marla still in your hold, she will put one finger under Marla's chin and lift it to look at her. At this point, her suggestion has dissipated, and you don't feel compelled to stay anymore, uh, Marla. Excellent. Sl like, slouch in relief. Oh, T, you're still stuck. Uh, Marla is just not compelled. Uh, I, yeah, that's why I'm is there relieved. a reason she's lifted my chin up? Is she talking to me? Yes, she looks at you, her face extremely close as she leans, and you can see she's quite beautiful despite everything and she looks very young for a mother of a nine-year-old you'd give her barely 20 um and she adds what about you my dear can i trust you uh well i'm pretty sure you would make me do what you want even if i disagreed I cannot do that at that far distance. Unless, of course, I put you in a similar confinement to that of, of Osvaldo. There is another set of chains up there. Uh, no thanks. I'll just, you know, not tell anyone your secrets. Same condition? Persuasion or deception? I don't know which one she would do right now, but I think uh, this 
You lie. Hmm. What to do with you? And at this point, she just seems to kind of pace back and forth. And you can see the tears have dried up to her eyes. I'm really useful to have around. Marla. I have a solution. You stay with me little one, and I will let your friend rejoin the party. Don't try anything. But, uh, I think I have something here that can compel you to silence for a long, long time. I don't like the sound of that! What do you plan You know I could be bought! What do you plan to do with her? There is a brand that I can place on her. And her attempt to talking to any kind of law enforcement about this, directly or indirectly, would be very painful <laughs> me after law enforcement you see i cannot let you go without this being settled he thinks it's over for a while I would, I do not, I understand that you cannot trust either of us. And I am sorry that we happened upon this, but I am, I am lost for words. You must forgive me. We, we just wanted to find a place away from everyone watching us. It, it was making us uncomfortable. But we just, a, we wanted to a be lover's escapade. A lover's escapade then. Hmm. Let's see. What else could be done? Where do you live? I... Are we compelled to tell her the truth? No. <sighs> I... We're we're from Neverwinter. Roll a deception. Sorry, the first one's the one that counts. I just, it took a while to show up. <laughs> Never winter. Hmm, that's a bit far. Yes. That's... Yes, it is. I am. We did not receive the best accommodation. I have had to rent a place in the southern ward. It is a hunter's place. Rented it out to me. But I I am sorry I continue to be lost for words. We have no use for what happened here. And we're deeply sorry that we had to encounter this. I I I feel woe for your son. I do. But then accept this as a bribery, a favor or quest of sorts. Should you come across the Stone of Galore before you return home, 
bring it to me so that I may free my son from its plight. What? I give you. Is, I'm, I'm sorry. What is the stone of Galore? To you, it would only be a small stone, a little in length, and it has four holes on the side, almost like a type of flute that seems to be carved onto a stone. A, a flute. It's a key. Yes, it, in appearance, but its meaning are foreign to most people. You would not understand it. Okay. It is a key. I simply need it to be brought to me. Then I will ask no more of you. I, but I, I need you to do this. And uh, she said, I need you both to extend your hand. And she pulls a little knife from a little hidden pocket in her net, in her dress. A bargain. What manner of spell is this, if I may ask? An agreement you will sign in blood. And I will start with your friend here. And she looks at Marla as she cuts a little line to the inside of her own hand and hands you the knife and an extender hand. I will start there. What makes you think that we would be able to find such a thing? That that sounds awfully adventurous. I would also like to know what we are signing ourselves to. You are not very clear. And being of a business background, you never sign without reading a contract. Um, I'm not necessarily requiring you to find it, but this will need you to at least make some effort before you were to return to your home. And should you ever come in touch with it, this is and, where the contract will tap in. And you this, must bring it to me. He looks back towards the chain devil. And your connections with this Admodius, this is non-binding to him. No, this would bind you to me. You don't like this plan? My patience is weaning. Know that if you were to return the stone to somebody else, you will be exonerated should you be killed or lost, lose the artifact. But should you turn it in to the authority, to the Xanatha, to the Centurim, to whoever other organization may be seeking this peace, your heart will cease to beat. Why? I'm sorry. Why? Oh, hold on. Yeah. I, I have many questions. Why couldn't we turn it into the 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 guard? Could wouldn't they just give it to you? The guards here, yes, but not the city watch. They clearly don't know the goings on here. Now. Yes or no? I will take your next question as no. And she pushes the knife a little bit towards Marla more. Uh, I think... I think I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I All don't right. see another way out of this without fighting her, and I don't think the two of us can take her on our own. So I'll take the knife and copy her actions. She will then shake your hand with her cut hand, 
mixing the your bloods together. Uh, you'll get a little nauseous, but shortly after you feel yourself being freed as the hold on tea leaves depart. Um, and he's now able to put you down. And uh, she will extend her hand to take the knife back. You lose one point of HP. Cool. Do you give her back her knife? Uh, yeah. Uh, she then extends it to T as uh, your muscles are now fully yours. I'm sorry. And he, he does it. In the same way, she shakes your hand. You lose a point of HP. And then she goes to take her knife back unless you try and stop her. I don't. Okay. Uh, you'll see that she just uh, pulls a handkerchief and just wipes the knife before putting it back in her pocket. Uh, and then wraps the handkerchief around her own hand. She'll pull two more. Give you one each white handkerchief to wrap around your own hand. Says, I should... Return to my son. Now, if you would please leave the guest room and not return, feel free to leave the estate as well. Uh, all right. And I take T's hands and I head out the door. And you both stop, start crying. T looks very distant right now. I did not like that. Hmm. I don't think we had an option. No. No, we did not. Unless we wanted to die. We are still dead. I think we just have to not come into possession of it on our own. Marla, we're not allowed to talk to anyone about what just happened. Who knows what she put in that curse she just gave us. We, we lost so much just now. We're not allowed to directly tell anyone. We're not allowed to indirectly tell anyone. She said it herself. Roll All... it in sight, please. Wait, who? You. Uh, both of you could do that. Actually, as the word escapes your lips, you, you replay what she said in your head. And you realize you can't tell anyone uh, that would basically tell the law enforcement. You can't, like, you wouldn't be able to go to Kagro, for example, and be Kagro tell the law enforcement. Or if you go tell Kagro knowing they'll try to stop her. So if you tell somebody, you'd be able to as long as you first convince them not to act on it. I, I think they would not do it if it would hurt us. If they... I, I agree. They would... We have been pretty around telling the guards much. But... But they do all kind of like law enforcement a lot. If we can get these word to anyone that isn't us, we can get more opinions, more eyes, and decide what to do with this stone. If we do find it, do you, I, I don't know if I, if that woman is true to our word. Oh no, she's a big fat liar. We can't <laughs> search for the stone. We can't. It, it, 
No one else can search for it. As the words escape your lips, you feel a a momentary chest pain. <clears throat> Fuck. Okay. Okay. We have no choice. All right, let's... If you think it's worth notifying the others of what just happened, I suggest we do. We need any kind of plan right now. I got nothing this time. Nothing. Then let's get some other opinions. Let's find our crew. All right. I will hop to Kagro, who was still <laughs> talking to some of the people around. Uh, by that point, Kagro, your date has returned to your arm, along with a procession of her friend that she clearly is trying to impress by being with you. Uh, as she had left you, she had basically been boasting who she's been accompanied with. And um, uh, you've been spending a bit talking about that last fight getting some praises, having people curious into what you're planning to do next. <laughs> well, most of my plans are to continue to be adventurer. Travel the world, have great adventures. It seems that I was offered to meet some people that might be able to tell me, or might be able to tell my story in the most heroic of ways. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, I'll be able to contact them soon. That sounds fascinating. I can't... Oh, I hope you'll keep me updated. Of course, I'll uh, keep everyone that kept uh, that stayed with me after the match and and my success in the in the ring and continues to uh, support my cause. Of course, I understand, but. The Perhaps here, if you were to be seen making a good donation, I think that would help your cause. At least that's how my father tends to do it. Do a good gesture, make a good impression, then to do something heroic somewhere. Well, the heroes of old oftentimes do great deeds and then they can do the donations. But I might consider as such as it would seem that I would, it seems to be the way of the nobility here. Indeed. And the conversation can go on and on. At this point, is there anything special, Kakuro, you would wish to achieve? Else I can always uh, bring Tea Leaf and Marla back into the main room to come and see you. Well, he's still looking for information about people that might provide these artifacts that they keep on getting a hold of and other things like that. He's also just generally trying to get information on what the nobles do so that he can emulate them better. But if he has the chance, he will actually offer it, offer to let his uh, to dance with his date. All right. So you'll definitely she'll definitely say yes. Um, and you're gonna have a few people going oohs and ahs, and uh, you can get to the ballroom, which has the big piano, and a few couples are waltzing there. Um, actually do a oh you already did roll for performance so you're, you're doing very well as you're uh, moving rather gracefully for someone who's been a wrestler and uh, people are definitely looking so you're grabbing the attention of people so any hope of you getting unnoticed now has vanished 
and uh, you'll you'll spot in the corner of your eyes that Rainier has come back down the stairs as you are twirling uh, your date. Gonna make yeah, sure, sure he does yes. some, you know, nice tosses and other th- such things with his date in such graceful manner. Absolutely. It's a, it's quite the spectacle. It's like a waltz from the Dancing with the Stars. The good ones. Not Sean Spicer? Oh. Kagro is not just good at at uh, smashing doors, he's also good at dancing, apparently. So before you'd be able to talk to him, Marla and Leaf, as you return, uh, that's basically where you see people have their attention and you would witness the end of the performance. But as the performance is ending, I'll move quickly, even uh, though Cerise hasn't joined us yet, just to quickly see if Darius has anything he had in mind while you and her were alone upstairs. Uh, no, more or less the, uh, the plan from there was to come outside and, uh, essentially find the others. I see. Also refill her champagne. All right. Then if you just heading back outside, you easily make your way down through the crowd, seeing a few people dancing and you find plenty of, uh, I saw your message in discord. So you'd find plenty of exotic orders for Cerise to sample yourself as well. Uh, you'd find plenty of seafood, which you may even enjoy. They have a lot of canapes uh, that are like a uh, shrimp, uh sushi like things so more on the raw side which you may enjoy uh and plenty of champagne around for for, for the most part uh, Darius is going to avoid eating and drinking cuz uh, it, it's more of a job to him what we're doing here yeah, more of a mission but he, he will take some of the seafood all right, so you're able to eat just little bits, though you're being very uh, modest in uh, what you're sampling. And uh, at some point you would notice you wouldn't see them exit necessarily the guest house, but you'll see T and Marla make their way back in from the distance in the courtyard. So whether you stay outside and enjoy the air with Cerise or um, follow them, that's up to you. You'll also notice in the back that uh, Drengar, Rishka, and uh, two guardsmen are, seem to be in some form of heated debate. Uh, and you'll see Rishka is pointing in places very uh, energetic, energetically. Um, and you'll hear on occasion her voice uh, carrying in the air about it being not watched or uh, vulnerable and things like that. I'm going to do my hardest uh, not to facepalm at them having attracted the attention of guards already. And um, I am going to sort of gently take Cerise's arm and sort of guide her towards the inside and whisper down, uh, I-, I believe I saw Marla and T. All right, so you're able to spot them as you're heading inside, and Cerise, as she had mentioned, would follow your uh, your lead. And uh, you're able to regroup and watch the end of Kagro's performance. Uh, once it ends and people start to spread and dissipate, and you'll see they're starting to get, move away, not just from the auction place, but... Um, also uh, going in some of the other rooms. So the place where the stairs are, um, the Lord Vittoro that you saw earlier will arrive there with a big golden box on wheels. And he's accompanied with a member of the city watch. That's a shiny box. And as he does so, you start to hear, hear ye, hear ye, 
for the great donors of this place, we will now take your generous donation. We are aiming for a total of 20,000 gold minimum for the night, in addition to the blind auction. Uh, we will be here for the next, um, until the interest wanes. Who thinks we should head over there? Because I do. Of course. You know, I need to donate some. It would be rude not. It would be. We are here, after all, to raise funds for the children. I think it was the children. Rude. Hmm. So I grab T's arm, uh, very couple-like, and I start walking up there to the pretty golden box. Um, Kagro will observe to see what the other nobles are giving on average. A rough right. estimate of the count should be sufficient. All right. Uh, so you're kind of taking. The, there's going to be a line forming up. So what you're saying is you're basically not being the first in line to be able to observe what the people in front of you are kind of donating. Yes, he doesn't have a clue what he's supposed to donate, so he's going to see what other people do to see what seems to be normal. Um, you'll see that people like the young ones, the the people that were with your date, for example, when they're by themselves, and they'll hand a little pouch and they'll be like, oh, 25 gold and 50 gold, thank you. Uh, then there's uh, a person who's dressed in a lot more fluff and they're in a couple as well uh, with his wife and the two of them are arriving and they plop this big uh, pack down and they're like, yes, uh, 3,000 gold for the children. And uh, you just hear, oh, yes, uh, Lord Woodbury, of course, I'll put your name down and make sure to give it a proper mention. Um, and then there's another person in front of you that's more like a hundred. You'll see the average seems to be on the two to three hundred gold. Uh, the young ones go a little bit below that, but 25 is the lowest you hear. And then you've got the big pockets there that gives in the thousands. Once he's got an average looking around, uh, Kagro will um, look at his uh, thing and uh, for a second just uh, for the children. Well, this is all I happen to bring with me, but here. And he will give 100 gold to the children. Ah, 100 gold. A good piece of your last winnings. Uh, thank you, un Unchained Kagro, right? Yes, that is what I'm going by now. The Untamed Devil is a thing of the past. I am now Kagro, the adventurer, and perhaps in time I will be Kagro, the legendary figure. But we will see, thank you. Well, it's a really good first act. And I wish you the best of luck in your adventure. Uh, then he kind of gives you a, a gesture with his hand to like scoot aside and it's like, next. Because of that and continues on doing the things. I'll, I'll, I'll go up um, and put a single gold coin in. He's going to give you a blank stare for a second and then mutter a very bleak thank you. My family did not come across our money by being loose with our money. Ah, uh, yes. But then those people do not go to charity, usually. I'm hoping you will at least have bid on some item in the auction. Oh, but of course, of course. Yes. Next! Okay, so Marla walks up and she takes a pouch out of her pocket uh, and hands it over. Um, and she bows very graciously and says, my lord, 
uh, it's a pleasure to meet. A pleasure indeed, Miss Marlena Gettelrimp. Marlena, and what will you be donating today? Ah, uh, uh, this pouch of coins, it is all I have brought with me from Neverwinter. I hope it will be very gracious. And how much is in your pouch? Uh, it is the pouch of remaining, uh, ball joints, <laughs> um, <laughs> with ten gold on top. So you're trying to pass it for more? Yes. And how much do you tell him it is? I don't. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you do not give him an amount, he will open the pouch and start to sift through it. <laughs> you must have made a mistake, my dear. I think you have some mumbles mixed with your coinage. Um, perhaps oh, you meant I another am, pouch. I am so sorry. And I uh, reach in to my pockets <laughs> and I will grab another 10 gold to put with the gold that is in that pouch. And uh, I just hand it over. Oh, and 20, he'll count it quickly, 20 gold and some marbles. I'm sure the children will love it. And uh, he'll add quite amusing and give you a bit of a smirk and puts it in the box. Uh, it, it's for the children. They do need joy in their lives as well, sire. Indeed. Uh, now, excuse me, my dear, but I must get the line to move. Oh, but of course. Uh, and then I will pull T away. You will notice that every time you give a donation, they kind of take your name and scribe it in a book. Everybody but Darius has been inscribed in this book of donations with an amount next to it. With a little uh, side note that says, don't trust the fish man. <laughs> Thanks for making a laugh, Kagro. Uh, does T give anything? T, um, after Marla goes up, is just going to kind of... He's having a much harder time keeping his guys up. He stares at the man with such intensity... His eyes that are glowing in his mask seem to kind of hover in front of them. He reaches into his cloak, fans out 20 coins, and drops them into the box one by one. It has been a long, long trip here. I'm sure you understand my tiredness. And he just walks off without saying anything else. All right. Uh, Please you forgive just... him, sire. My name? Oh, uh... You, I forgot my name, didn't I? Uh, yes, otherwise we'll have to put anonymous. My name is Quivering Glade. Uh -huh. It must be... I've heard of tabaxi names, not met many of your kind, but please feel welcome here, and thank you for your donation. A faint smile crosses his mouth. Appreciate it. And he will. You get no hint that he is off-put by your intensity in any way. I'm not trying to off-put him. T is just in a shitty mood. Uh, because I'm in a shitty mood. And I'm a method actor, so T, by extension, is in a shitty mood.
All right, so we're going to take a quick pause until Zuri's can fully log in and you can discuss a little bit O'Seely, uh, as you will, and uh, then we can catch Zuri's up. I was hoping to have a conversation with Vittorio, Vittorio but that didn't happen. He was not happy. He's busy. Too busy to be on Marvel Marvel. You may, you may be able to catch him once the charity bit has passed, but right now there's a lineup of people. That's fair. I don't think it's in our best interest to disclose anything we know to him. Well, that's that's her husband. I just wanted to see what he would let slip. Hey. Oh, there she is. The other half thing. Can you remove curses, by the way? Not yet. Eventually, I'll be able to remove curses. I also don't think it's a right and proper curse, just saying. A right, That's not that helpful now. A right and proper curse. What do you mean by that? Well, I don't know. Like curses can be cured by remote curse, you know. Yeah, I'm sure. But this one is pretty much fucked. Anyway, speaking of which, Cerise, we should probably catch you up on what happened. Okay, I'm so like, at the very beginning, yeah, at the very beginning, after she told, after that bitch told us to stay a while, I that bitch that. turned yeah. out to be the lady of the house. Um, and that was her child. And that fucking thing was her deformed child. She Nine-year-old made, child. She made a deal with Asmodeus in exchange for some form of payment. We were caught because of all the roles we could have been unlucky on, it was those roles to get out of there. Um, so we had to strike a deal. She cursed us to find the stone of whatever... Um, for her. I don't remember its name at the moment. I thought we didn't have to specifically look for it, but if we found it, we had to give it to her. That sounds We're reco- cool. And it's called the yeah. Galore. Cool Thank you. We, and we, we can't tell anyone about this either. Well, we can tell people, it's just that we can't get this information to the guard. So, ultimately, we're sworn to secrecy, and if we find the stone, we have to deliver it to her. So, we, our objective here is, or one of a part of our objective here, is now null and void, because we can't relay the information we have to you. And if we do, we're required to deliver to deliver it to her, or two of her party members die. Well, yeah, I think everything is clear as mud. I'm like, what? I'm. Wait, can't you tell us? We just I, I we can, can tell, you. tell you, but not if you're gonna tell the city guard. Also, if and you there guys there is a distinct possibility that you will. Also, yeah, if like... you guys find it, I assume that that's also binding under the curse that you will have to give it to them. No, so no, honestly, no one it's an... sliced us up. I don't see why that would be binding of the curse. Um, okay, they aren't they required to. Reach. She doesn't like the guards. <laughs> okay, well, brilliant. Then we have our workaround. We just Marla and I should probably leave. Then we uh, should probably I, just. Sorry, there's one other workaround that I like. I seem to have noticed. Maybe it's not true. Um, she said we needed to bring her the stone. She didn't say we couldn't use the stone before we brought it to her. What? Remind me what we need to use the stone for. To open the vault. It's it's a key. And okay. I mean. Yeah. But the problem is. I assume the curse. If we. it's It literally caused us chest pain. Just mentioning that we couldn't look for it. If Marla or I. Even lay eyes on the stone. It's over. So we need to get out of here. We need to relay the information. To you. Whatever we found out make you promise not to tell the guards and then we need to just remove ourselves from the equation because now we're an endangerment. No, I have a perfect plan. Just hear me out here. Oh dear. 
Every All right, time so you hear me out. does it include a box? Uh, oh, a box. That would be perfect, actually. Um, now I have two plans. All right, so the first plan is, uh, she did say that if you were injured or killed, the uh, agreement, you know, it, that would be no. Like, if you can't bring it to her, it's not going to kill you. So, if you guys get the stone, the rest of us just beat the tar out of you till you fall unconscious and take the stone. That's actually, you know what? I'm going to be brutally honest. I was thinking of killing off T just so I could get the information to you. I'm going to be absolutely honest. No! But I actually like Darius' idea a lot because... Easy way out. It, it's easy. I It would... Fuck Marla and I up a lot, but we wouldn't die. It would. Doesn't someone have a sleep spell or something? Uh, I mean, I guess, but Wait. we could always just beat the tar out of me. Clarification on what we agreed to, please. We agreed. Did she that... say if we found it or if we had it in our possession? If you find it, it doesn't mean you have it. If you find it as a group, it would still apply. Okay. I have one so, more idea. You have to find it and not tell us you found it. Yeah, so pretty much, like, I don't even know. Yeah, j just... Uh, so wait, Vicky... She did say that if we're incapacitated in some fashion, we're... It does not nullify the bargain. You just won't die from being robbed or killed. Well, if you're killed, you know, that's kind of like the end of it anyways. But if you're robbed of it, that's one thing. But you can't tell anyone who will work against the Castle Lantern in any way. So if they work against them later in any way, that basically is you breaking the bar again. Okay. You have one other idea. We let you guys die, and then we get use the massive amount of money we've gained to have you reanimated. That's twenty one thousand gold per person. Well, they were trying to raise twenty thousand gold at this uh, exciting event, so you know, Marley, you got to get those sticky fingers in there. Oh dear. Yeah, that's I mean, one person. I mean, I could take the box, but I need to find where it goes after this. Honestly, guys, I think that it's. I don't know what to do. Like, I don't think we can tell you anything because, like, if we tell you anything, we're in danger. Right. So. What happens if these people just get the thing and you all are absolved of your obligation? We have to bring it to her, and that's the problem. We don't want to bring it to her, so we really can't tell you guys anything. So have we considered that we give it to her and then we kill her and take it back? I was about to, suggest that too. I was about to say, what's the big deal with her getting it? Then she just has it. But and like, and then we have this stab. Okay, but then we're killing the lady of the house and a really important person, but okay. That's, yep. No, I'm not saying kill her. I'm saying, what's the big deal if this woman gets the stone? That's the part she's I'm missing. She's an Asmodeus cultist. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yes, yeah, she's... But that, I know that's bad, but so then what's she going to do? I don't know. She has, demon baby she, from Asmodeus, so. she has a demon baby, and she has... It's some degree of high level spell. She was able to cast Persuade. So she has some degree of spells. We're all on armor. To be if fair, it is five on one. Until such we a time. We haven't found it. Yeah, until such a time as we find the stone, all of this is a boot point. Yeah, but our thing requires us to make an effort, I think, unless that's incorrect, Vicky. So why is she enlisting a bunch of noobs to get it if she's more powerful than all of it? Because we stumbled upon her and her demon child. And she doesn't want them us to tell us. They, she doesn't want them to tell the world about her demon child. Because it would foil their plans. 
she is trying to fix her demon child, I believe, which is why she I, wants the stone. I think she's full of shit. I think she's full of shit as well, but that's what she said. Well, way I see it, currently. Uh, yeah. Um, well, we can't foil anyone in their plots if we're dead, so I say we just do whatever makes us remain alive. Also, so, to say we have to do it right now, we could, you know, leave and get our armor and stuff and come back when we have the stone and stuff and deal with it. Okay, that's, that's fair. I guess it wouldn't be... Well, then we'd be plotting against her. Fuck. Unless we, we don't have to kill her. Well, yeah, that counts as plot. I mean, by technicality, we're still delivering she the stone. She cannot that plot against her getting the stone in any way. I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah. Give her you the guys. Stone. Yeah, we give her the stone yep. and then do we take it back? I feel like the ultimate best solution currently for us is not to discuss something most of us don't know. Let T and Marla decide if they trust telling us, because so long as they think we're not going to tell, that should be fine. Um, okay, so... And make do with what we know from what they say, essentially. Uh, as, so as not to be too meta, I guess. Alright, so basically, all we need is to get her the stone, and then do whatever the fuck we need to get it back. Yeah, that sounds correct, because once the stone is in her hands, then your contract is void and she can no longer murder you. And yeah. Until then, Cerise can keep eating snacks and drinking champagne. I think we're going to need your help, because our hearts are literally, like, wrapped in barbed wire right now. Literally? Not literally, no. but the curse okay, pretty millennial, much... Millennial, literally, okay. Yeah, but our... If we, she worded it very bluntly. If you break your vow, your heart will cease to beat. So yeah, we're just gonna die right then and there. All right, awesome. I mean, not about dying. I mean about not doing that. Yeah, let's just get the fucking stone to her, and then do whatever we need to, please. In a hurry. Right. All right. Yep. So now I will cut the discussion short. And now that we have everybody here, a little extra catch up for Cerise. Uh, after they had their moment with this, and uh, Kagro had done a nice big grand uh, waltz in the ballroom for everyone to witness, uh, Vittoro appeared in the room uh, where the stairs are, where you headed up with Frenier and started to uh, collect donation for a charity. So he has a big golden box on wheels, and people have been donating. He's aiming to get at least 20000 Uh The average people have been no donating around uh, two, 300 gold. The people who seem to be here for the first time or are younger will give around twenty to 50 gold. For average, uh, Kagro has donated a hundred gold. Darius gave one and earned himself a little bit of spite. Uh, Marla gave twenty gold and some ball bearings. Uh, T also gave twenty gold and a chill stare that didn't seem to have much of an impact, and was quite forgiven as he seemed to be easygoing. There's more people in line, so I didn't know if you wanted to also give a donation to the charity to make an appearance in front of the rest of the nobility. Uh -huh. Okay, let me look at her money and things. Hmm. All right, if the people who are obviously new here have been giving 20 and not getting a hairy eyeball, then uh, she will go over there with a more friendly demeanor and cheerfully put uh, 25. 
Well, thank you for your gracious donation, Miss. And uh, you'll notice that they've been putting name in a register of everyone's donation. Why did the guard move? Oh, it's not the guard. Uh -huh. That's Rainier. I just took okay. him out there because he wasn't there anymore. So what name do you give to Vittorio, Cerise? Um, oh goodness. We discussed this last time, whether we were you just used trying to regulated. hide who we were, just be us. Yeah. Yeah, last I'll go ahead time. and I'll go ahead and get my real name then, yeah. Uh, Miss Cressworthy, thank you. Uh, you should receive a thank you letter shortly. And uh, he'll pass the next few in line. It goes very quick. You see there's maybe a dozen people left in line. And uh, before he keeps going, he'll flag one of the butlers around. And uh, you'll hear him, because he's not whispering that low, to go close the auction. Um, they'll be announcing the winners of the artifacts in uh, as soon as the moon has reached its peak. All right, I'm going to, uh, I guess, tell Darius that I overheard that when I go back. Or if anyone else is close enough to tell, I'll tell them too. But I think only Darius is here. No, you're all in the same room together with the exception of Drengar. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if the others were separate after this thing going on or not, so... No, Kagro and everybody else just did their donations and we're all in the same room as far as I understand. Yeah, I brought us in here specifically to get with them. Okay, so in that case, she comes back over and she says, apparently the auctions are about to close. I hope they're not going to stop serving snacks. I don't know. Perhaps they will, perhaps they won't. Well, at least it's... So, we'll have to see. You know how to think about it. I haven't really gotten anything to eat myself. I've been too busy dancing. And he looks around for, like, a table for food. Oh, I you should know. definitely try the... And she tells you about one of the little snacks that's, like, super delicious. I don't know how you all can eat at a time like this. It, it Knives is everywhere. time not for eating? Tea Leaf's eyes seem to grow a bit darker behind his mask. His glare is almost unyielding at the moment. Ah, Tea, Myla, where have you been? Do I've you seen really you want to know? We have been I... exploring the grounds. He kind of glares at Marla. Oh, Marla, you also should try the insert <laughs> name of snack here. Oh, for, I think I will. I bet it's delicious. For the reference of everyone here, she is Marlena. I am glad. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry, sorry. It is fine. Ah, correct, yes. Forgive me. I've been on edge this entire time. Speaking of on edge, is there a place we can find that is quieter than here? Uh, upstairs, I believe. That's where. In fact, we have something to tell you, I believe. He's already halfway upstairs by the time you finish your state. Oh, see. Where's Kagro's uh, gate at this point? Uh, she's still somewhat next to you as you're all kind of talking and she can see that you guys are busy among yourselves. She's going to give you a quick pat and say, I'll rejoin with my friends. Uh, come and see me when you're done with yours. Oh, yes, of course. I don't mind. It was a pleasure to dance with you. We'll see, perhaps we can get one more before the party is over. She blushes as she leaves. And then Kagro will follow the others up the stairs.
So, Darius, what have you to say first? Nothing can dampen my spirits right now. Mm, well, we've learned some about the stone, as it happens. Oh, brilliant. Great. Okay. <laughs> he, you he's, seem agitated, he, Yes, I'm very agitated. And perhaps I should say what I have first on that very subject. And if you're certain... Um... Should you, though? <laughs> Oh, this. Well, we, we learned that gnome's uh, end location had been the sharpest cell. He was bringing the stone to us. Mother. Wait. T's expression becomes horrified. Could you say that again? Well, the gnome who was so unceremoniously incinerated in front of our shop. He was sent to bring the stone to us. Okay. Oh. Okay. The father of that young lad we saved, um, in way of thanks, he was bringing it our way. Not to mention, um, his father's death was uh, greatly exaggerated. Well... Speaking death, Marla and I are in mortal danger as we stand before you. Uh, what else is new, though? You don't look Darius, like in mortal danger. This is not. I reject that insinuation. This is not a time for joking. Please, I cannot take it right now. This is. First of all, before I say anything else, this is to stay between the five of us. Six, if Darius was here. and I mean, not Darius, Drinkar. If, if you insist. Um, this is not to be. No, like, it has to stay between us. You can't tell anyone else. Or we die. Oh, dear. <laughs> what happened? Long, long story. Marla and I were doing a bit of scouting, we'll call it, and happened upon a scene. The lady of this house has made a deal with Asmodeus. She what? Keep your voice down. As Please you come. say this, you hear a click and a slight wince. Uh, about 20 feet down the hallway, you see uh, what is clearly a maid step out of a double uh, two-door bedroom of some sort. Uh, and she spots you and looks at you all incredulously for a moment in complete silence. And you see as she looks at you, not dropping her stare, she reaches for the two doors, closes them extra carefully, pulls a key from um, her apron, and locks it before she goes a little further down the room uh, at the hall and enters the next room there. Uh, she has a bucket that has some uh, wet cloth hanging on the side, so she's clearly doing some cleaning at this point. Housekeeping. I've had enough of exploring rooms today. So, as I was saying, we found out that there was a deal made with Asmodeus with the lady of this house. She needs the stone to cure her demonified son who is currently bound in chains and is disgusting. I'm, I'm sorry. I cannot imagine what brings people to do such things. Mm, power, usually. Anyway, we are now bound by blood to this woman, Marla and I, to bring the stone to her. We have no choice. 
Your persona's breath. Why would you do such a thing? She is an incredibly powerful mage. In just a few words, she put Marla in a trance and rendered my limbs unable to move. Well, then why did you make a deal with her? There were two of us against her and someone she could perhaps unchain at any moment. I would rather not make an enemy of someone like that. Oh, goodness. So we she are in the... might have also threatened us with other slightly worse things. Oh? What? Defamation? Uh, chaining us up with her demon son? She only threatened yes. you with that. Well, perhaps we can get her to undo this, this thing that she did to you. Where did you find her? Perhaps we, should, we can talk to her. Cabro. That is perhaps the absolute worst idea you have ever had. Cerise is going to gawk at him, too. If she's mm, has doing things with Asmodeus, I highly doubt that she's the kind of person you can just talk into fixing something. No, best not talk with that kind, ever. So... Sorry. I see the little option here. We... We're screwed, to be honest. Totally screwed. Because now that we've told you what's happening, we have no choice but to return the stone to her. And plotting against her also causes our hearts to stop. I see... Grave news. know they're plotting against her. I'm sorry. I, I, I suppose I just wanted to talk to someone about it. I didn't mean to put you in danger. Well, we were already in quite a bit of danger from the cult of Asmodeus. If this is one of their haunts, though... I just, perhaps I wanted a second opinion. Do any of you three, well, maybe not Kagro. He, he finds himself chuckling somehow. But Cerise, Darius, do you have any ideas on how to fix this? Tell me, if you never find the stone, what happens? You die the, for failing this? The effect is binding until we return home to Neverwinter. Obviously, you can see where the problem lies. I don't believe you come from Neverwinter. Yeah. Donnery is for... F mm. But isn't that a problem? I mean, if you don't live at Neverwinter, then how can she fulfill a contract? Well, um, our aliases live in Neverwinter. She believes we are from Neverwinter. So... Since we do not hail from Neverwinter, we are permanently bound to this until we bring her the stone. Are you bound by name? We are bound by blood, magical bindings, Kagro. This is something that cannot be taken lightly. Well, I mean, what if you just took a trip to Neverwinter then? <sighs> That's a thought. That is... Never wonder could be nice, actually. Uh, you get the sense that you're supposed to look for the Storm of Galore before you start heading to Neverwinter. He crushes, uh, clutches his chest a little bit. <laughs> she mentioned we had That's to make an attempt. She mentioned we had to make an attempt first. So it's not so easy. That's easy. Well. Just make an attempt. We've had trouble finding it as is. Consider... Well, what if we do just keep looking for the stone for now? There's time to think this over. 
time until we find the stone. Right. Right. At worst, perhaps we do give it to her, and well, we we see what happens from there. Okay. Okay. What would happen if we destroyed the stone? If we destroyed it, I'm pretty sure Marla and I would still die. Why? That's not plotting against her. That's not plotting against her, but that's failing to deliver the stone through omission. We literally destroyed what we were supposed to give her. That's failing to... That's technically plotting against her. Destroying it so she can't have it. And I think that, that would still kill us. Sounds like a lot of speculation. The thing Perhaps is... I should have gotten this in writing. It would have been much easier to understand. I would have loved to, Kagro, but she was threatening me and Marla. I asked as many clarifying questions as I could before she started saying, do it or else. Well, if that's but a magical thing, there has to be some magical way of undoing such a thing. Yeah, I'd, I'd hope so. I, I, Actually, that's an idea. Can... I get a curse on like this. Excuse me. I hate to interrupt. Uh, go ahead. But perhaps any further discussion on this topic should be left till later. After all, while this is the most private place at the party... It may uh, not be for long. Yes. Or as private as we hope. Okay. Further discussion should probably be held somewhere um, safer. Okay. I think he's jammed. What do you think is in that room the maid came out of? I personally do not care. I've had enough of looking into strange rooms. Tonight all it has brought me is trouble. Well, I imagine it's most likely a, a bed, perhaps. Some sheets. Do you think the maid heard us talking about this? Unfortunately, I think it is within the realm of possibility. Well, wouldn't that be a problem if she decides to tell someone? What are we to do? Well, if We can't just go stop this curse of yours. Um, you would probably die if she told someone. Who's she, working against her employers? T seems to like make a half motion towards his dagger out of spite, stops himself, and then just brings. Oh my goodness, his... what happened to your hands? Parts of the curse. We were literally. We took the oath in literal blood. Cerise gets a really, like, intense frown on her face. Like, she was looking consternated before, but now she actually looks pit. Tea Leaf's expression hasn't changed this entire time. He still looks really pissed. Marla takes the handkerchief off her hand, because I don't think the cut was all that bad. Uh, no, it's and not. She doesn't like... like Cerise to worry. <laughs> or does it not stop bleeding? It would still have bled a bit. Um, it's not a paper cut. It's definitely bigger. It's like taking a sharp kitchen knife and slicing your hand from one side to the other. But it's not something that you went like i'm assuming you didn't go like hyper deep but it's still open quite a bit of blood vessel oh then i will put it back on <laughs> it's not that bad cerise it's okay we'll we'll be fine as long as 
you know. I mean, it's one thing to threaten to hurt you. It's another thing to already start hurting you. I don't like this one little bit. Technically, she didn't do the hurting. We had to do it ourselves. Well, that's not much better. <sighs> well, it sounds like we need to get out of here and figure out a plan to do this, but inevitably it does seem like we have no choice but to find the stone and give it to her. I'm sure there's ways around this, but for now, how about we just search for the stone, bring it to her, and then deal with what we need to when we bring it to her? Very well. The stairs that you are standing very close to start to creak from the bottom. And someone is coming up. Are they listening? Uh, you would not know. You just think that they're coming up. They don't, they're not stopping to, to eavesdrop. It doesn't give us that impression. They're just coming upstairs. I would like to take a peek around the corner and see who is uh, coming up the stairs. Um, you won't have to do a check for that. Um, and your eyes will meet Vittoro's eyes as he's coming upstairs. And when he realizes you're looking at him, he will pause and look up. He says, As much as this area of the household is open to guests, I would prefer people not dawdle in uh, the upstairs section. I get the attraction of seeing the inside of the great manor, um, but we would rather not risk getting robbed. And no, I am not throwing accusations. It's a simple security precautions. We prefer people to go upstairs only to use the privies and return downstairs. Uh, if you wouldn't mind returning to uh, the rest of the crowd, I would appreciate it. And uh, on that, he turns around and starts to go back down. T is too bent out of shape to oppose. He just kind of leads the charge down. Well, I think thus far that's the solution. No point staying up here now. And yes, we should finish the party, enjoy ourselves when we can, and figure out what we're going to do when we get back. I Yes, the right of it. Uh, Kegro will return to the party and join whatever dance or phrase going on down there. And eat some. Um, Darius will also return to the party. But if he was staying away from the food now, he's given it a wide berth. Especially now. Or he was then, he is now. Ah, words. Point being, he trusts his place even less now that he knows it belongs to worshippers of Asmodeus. Uh, you'll find Vittorio is back in the auction room and uh, they've set up a table with names and uh, he's rejoining one of what seems to be maitre d's of the place. Um... And uh, they're starting to announce who were the victor of the auction. I see Cerise is still upstairs. Are you staying behind to do some investigation of your own? Uh, no, I'm just trying to figure out why there's 200 messages in here and trying to catch up so I could actually say something. In Sorry. 
let me move me. I would definitely have followed him. Okay, just checking. So everyone returns to the main room and kind of listens to the conclusion of the auction. Okay. Uh, sure. Gagro dances, eats, does whatever he needs to, and listens to the conclusion of the auction. Yes. He's gonna depressively stuff his face. Yes, actually, it makes sense. Uh, best to listen to the conclusion of the art. You know, that seems like the perfect time to steal stuff. Con save, mother. Mm. I'm already just kidding. <laughs> I'm already pissed off enough. Please don't play with my heartstrings tonight. You're just gonna puke in the middle of the party. No big deal. <laughs> it's a big loud retching where everybody then stares at you and your and your angry <laughs> moviness. It's like I do the thing I where, where cats hands. like cats like throw up where they like make the gagging noises like five times before they actually puke. All right, so it goes on. It takes a little while. It's kind of the drab part of the night where they're like, okay, congratulations to, you know, Lord Champagne and Miss Fontaine and whatever for getting this piece of blah, de blah, de blah. And it's it's a, a little bit lengthy and people are doing the little fancy clap that, that doesn't really make noise on top of gloved hands. Uh, going, oh, yes, you deserved it. Good job. Um, and then the party mostly disperse, and uh, Vittorio will then announce, all right, enjoy the last moment of the night. Uh, we will be shutting our doors uh, very shortly. Um, and you'll see people are actually starting to depart from the estate. Uh, there's just a few people who linger around to close conversation, finish deals, so on and so forth. Can I find someone who is lingering? Yes. Are you looking for something in particular? Uh, I was just going to see if they were also curious that Amalia didn't actually show her face. Like, yes, we saw her, but no one else saw her. Oh, you'd find... You'd find people, yes. You would probably find a few uh, people who consider themselves closer friends to the Lord and Lady. Um, and uh, so you're basically asking her, oh, have you seen the Lady? Or um, Oh, I, I had been looking forward to meeting the Lady Amalia. I had heard such wonderful things. But I, I don't think I saw her this time. Oh, no, my dear. I think she was busy with the children. Oh, I did see them earlier. Yes, she has three. It's a handful. That does sound like quite a handful. She doesn't have nannies? Well, yes, but a mother has to be present at some point. Well, yes, but on a night like this, I, I just, I suppose I had expected her to be, uh present here I well I heard the oldest has gotten sick so she might be by his bedside oh that that sounds dreadfully terrible I, I hope he feels better soon indeed do, do you know if if it's a dreadfully terrible illness Oh, I've heard all kinds of rumor, but it's it's hard to tell which one is true. Oh, you know, rumors are never good things to listen to when it comes to uh, nobility and their families. True, true. Otherwise, the ones about him having the plague could be true, and that would be horrible. The plague? Yes, that's one among them, and saying that 
We will bring doom and gloom to all of the town. Oh, that that would be terrible. Doom and gloom. Indeed. If if you'll excuse me, uh, thank you. I, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Oh, may the evening treat you well. And uh, she'll nod and return to uh, what she seems to be doing. She gathers the last of her things and actually departs. Um, Darius, as you seem to be distracted by a few things, as you turn, you find yourself face to face to Varja, the black staff herself. She's no longer oh. wearing her mask. Uh, I'll, I'll immediately bow first off and say, oh, 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 my lady. Grey Hunt. It is um, a pleasure to see you here. Yes. I have a task for you. Well, of course. Um, what is it you desire? There has been some events. And she kind of pulls you to the corner and lowers her head. And uh, you see she has like these deep um, bluish eyes. And you could swear there's like some, some strings of brown in them. Um, and she just uh, looks at you very intently. There's been a dragon hanging by this port at sea. We need you to investigate. Okay. He hangs at the coast, underwater. A bronze dragon. I would like to know what its intentions are. He can't penetrate the barriers because of the city protection. But I'm hoping he's not hindering the ships. Uh, would I need to roll to know the alignment of bronze dragons? Or... Uh, nature check. With a 17, um, you don't know the exact alignment because, you know, alignment wouldn't be a term that... Uh, the, the denizens would use you just right. know in short they're not evil kind they're usually not uh, the type of people who have nefarious or cruel inclinations uh, some of them have been known on occasions however to uh, be a little bit more self-serving without uh, cruelty or being more trickster like um but not always, and it tends to depend on the age as well. Well, I, I should think it does not intend to cause uh, any harm. They generally are not evil creatures, but uh, I shall see, um, see what its desires are and its intentions should be. Yes, well, I would appreciate if you would meet with it and inquire. Of course. Will you be going alone? I should um, like to attempt to bring my compatriots along with me. Though for the meeting itself, they're rather lacking in their required equipment, if you know what I mean. And he brings his hands up to his gills. She pulls a bag and you hear some glass clinking from inside and offers it to you. I have enough for two. And uh, if you look inside the bag, these are potions in a bluish purplish tint. And they have a label on them that says water breathing. Ah, thank you, my lady. Um, friendly or no, I uh, did loathe having to face the creature alone. Your will shall be done. Thank you. Report to my tower once you have had more luck. 
or at least success in your mission. Of course. Uh, I shall see to it without all due haste. She gives you a slight bow of the head and without waiting for any kind of reply, walks out with her head high and leaves the manor. Whew. Whew. Uh, I'm going to rush over to the others now, uh, supposing they're all together. Uh, if Marla has rejoined, I think they are, but they, they're in the same room, just a bit scattered. T is stuffing face. Marla was talking to other people. Kagro was uh, showing off a little bit some of his fame. We're now talking with Marla. Um, I'll, I'll head over to Cerise then, since I'm supposed to be with her anyway. Ah, C Cerise, did you see that? Uh, what was the last word you said? It cut off. I said, Cerise, did you see that? Oh, in that case, that word didn't cut off. Uh, yeah, yes. What is what does she want? I uh, hold up the bag and say, I have another mission. Um, I, I would not speak of it here, but... Well, as uh, soon as this is all over, I'll um, let all of you know. But I, I believe that I am entering her good graces now. Uh, she did come to me directly, after all. Uh, she was already here, of course, but it's a good sign. Well, as long as she didn't magically compel you to do something. <laughs> Cerise looks grumpy again. <laughs> oh. Yes, they should not have entered that agreement. Uh, we'll find a way out of it for them. If you're not. She just looks up at you, hopefully. Like, oh, he, he seems to think there's some hope for this, so yay. I resist patting her on the head when she looks up with her hopeful eyes. <laughs> it's kind of adorable. Don't worry. It, it'll work out in the end. One way or another. How can you be so sure? Persona will make it so. She doesn't say anything to that. And if not he, I shall. As the evening is waning, both in and out of game, uh, the door will eventually close and have everybody need to leave. So you'd be able to have a conversation on your way back to the Troll Skull uh, Manor. Uh, and I'll leave the forums open for you to discuss. And as you do so, return home with a very busy mind and a lot on your conscious conscience um you have now concluded chapter three and ascended to fourth level so congratulations <gasps> yes <laughs> are you allowing feats or not i will permit feats and uh, I will ask before we all leave that uh, everyone rolls your new health. Boom. I think Marla actually rolled max. Nice job. Uh, not quite, almost. Out of the 29 range, at least. That was really annoying me. I almost rolled max, too. I think Darius and oh. I have the same HP now. Everybody else did really well, so I'm gonna suck. What's your HP? I'm at 36 max. Yep, same. Nice. I'm at 26 now. Nice. Hmm. I think okay. I might be doing it wrong. Big improvement for Kagro yeah. considering. Uh, you just hit the um, hit oh, nice button. I, on the feet. Yeah, and apparently just didn't light up to be. 
Yep. Told you. Oh. You can oh. re-roll with your luck of the halfling. Oh. Yeah, with please this, do. I, I let everyone Yay. know. That's much better. So yeah, that's keeping with the, the group's average, really. Right, I'll let uh, Green know to level his character up, too. Where is Green? <laughs>